This is Mark Watson, and Mark is suffering from post Maple Leaf uh, traumatic stress disorder because Toronto once again failed to get out of the first round. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm clearly a Toronto Blue Jays fan, and what uh, Leafs? You say no? no I, I, it's I'm, okay, uh, buddy. I'm not it's okay. I, I I know the pain. I, I, I change my allegiances very quickly, like immediately my Facebook profile picture and, and cover picture and selection of hats and shirts was immediately changed. And I'm pretty sure I deleted the app off my phone. I think I did that. <laughs> well, because at this point it's like, well, the season's over and here's a bunch of useless information about next season and I don't care. Just give me my game updates and tell me who's injured and who's not. That's why I have the app in the first place. So yeah, go on. Go yeah, on. yeah. Um, I, I have a rotation of my apps. So, so once my sports team is done, that's it, canceled. So do you want to know? Do you want to know what really kills me about um, Toronto, the Maple Leafs? My in my opinion, they've had the talent to go deep in the playoffs for the last five years. They 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 should have a, at least five. I'd say, and it's like. So I'm a I'm a Red Wing fan. I was I've been a Red Wing fan when when Tim Shovelday was in net. If you know how long ago that was, if you know that name, you understand that I had some painful times myself watching them in the playoffs, right? Including one very fateful time when the when the Toronto Maple Leafs were actually really good and probably should have went to the finals, uh, right? They actually should have went to the finals that year. Mm. Yeah. It. It's, a, it's the kind of thing that like I bring up as a joke every once in a while. and just like, oh, yeah, there was always that one time, and here's the, all the long list of reasons why. And the, at the end of the day, they've, they've still, in my lifetime, never even been close to good enough to bring home the hardware. And it's... that Actually, I, I will disagree. That year, they were. They were good enough. It just didn't work out. Well, if it doesn't work out, then... Arguably, they weren't good enough. <laughs> luck plays a role in it. Our luck plays a role in it, and definitely in their LA series, that played a big role in it. Um, As, it, it 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 does in it in some way. I'm like I'm a coach of hockey and baseball, and one of the main things that I tell the kids is, especially in something like a tournament uh, of some kind, is, "Hey, kids, if you don't want to lose by one goal or one run to bad officiating or bad luck." beat the other team by two. That's the only way that you can possibly say at the end of it. So like, if you know that the refs or the umps are going to call it a certain way, you got to adjust. You can't sit there and complain about it because well, that's fair. you're not going to, you're not going to be able to do anything about it. So you got to adjust and you got to play to that level then whatever that level may be. So you got to be dynamic about it. You can go in with a plan and everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. So you got to right. be able to adjust. And so that's why I tell them like, don't let the don't let bad officiating complain about it afterwards when you're in the middle of the game adjust to it beat the other team by two because that's the only way it's because you don't want to go home at the end of the day and be all like oh we would have won that game if not for the refs well the refs are part of the game and you have to adjust to it they, they, no, there's definitely truth to that like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna disagree with you like they, they but if you're talking about good enough that team wants yeah. yeah, and 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 to be fair, uh, Carrie Frazier is not on any of my Christmas lists, but yeah, it, 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 it's true that there was a little tiny bit of shenanigans going on there. Ninety three was something incredibly special. Doug Gilmore is one of my favorite players of all time. Yeah, uh, I have a, my Gilmore jersey and my Gilmore autograph, and I, I loved him, even though he was only in Toronto for what three and a half seasons or something. Like something like that, yeah. But I mean, like, he was the heart and soul. Like he was the heart and soul of that run. And and even the second the second year, they got to the same place, but they weren't good enough. Like they were a good team, but they weren't good enough. But the first year, they were good enough. They they could have done it. And we were literally a game away from Toronto Montreal final. That would have been yeah. awesome. That would have been awesome. So that, that would have been fantastic. And yeah, well, uh, you know, the winner was the. The winner was as, in Canada. Didn't matter who won the cup at that point. As a as a Leafs fan, I know they would have lost in Game Seven in overtime to a bad pass, because that they're gonna they're gonna take me to that precipice and then they're gonna push me off of it. And that is what I, as a Leafs fan, it, am accustomed it, to. It, 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 see, see me, I, I would I would say it like this. I would say it like this. 
Um, Toronto probably would have lost to Montreal at the very end. Probably. Montreal was really good that year. They were really, really good. But but the thing about that was it wouldn't have mattered. Like the fact that you would have had that rivalry at the very, very process, mm-hmm. like it didn't matter who won. Like that's a victory in of its like, yeah, you want to win the cup. And I don't know if Toronto would have had the gas to do it. But yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, the LA series it. was tough. And it was it, it was like I remember I was 13 at the time that that was being played. So I was like, I was a just a young guy who was getting into sports, like the watching it, the consuming it, not just the playing it. The playing it I've been done for doing for a while, but the 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 influence that it had on my circle as I'm becoming a teenager and I'm and, and I'm learning about the world at large. That was one of the ones because it was the the same year as uh as the blue jays won their second world series and like toronto was just on fire right and like this that one at 92 one at 93 so the hey now the leafs are hot too and they're right in there and and uh, for some strange reason doug gilmore started bleeding for absolutely no reason which definitely wasn't a high stick from the greatest hockey player of all time so yeah, I mean that was one of those like yeah, but that team was good enough. Like that's the only I like. I know because I got to watch my team, who was also good enough, lose to them in seven games, and I was very very choked up about it. Not as choked up as I would be the next year when they lost to San Jose. That that hurt. That one really really hurt, mm-hmm. right? Um, and then the year after, we 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 go. Deep into the playoffs, we meet this bud saw called the New Jersey Devils. Get annihilated, like annihilated. Yeah, the, right. that that mid nineties Jersey team was terrifying, absolutely terrifying. Oh, Ber- there was nothing like Berdour ever at that time. And Scott Stevens has always, always been a good player. Like he, like yeah. always. All-time favorite hitter, although in all fairness, I loved Constantino from Detroit a couple years later, but we'll never know how good he could have been. We'll mm-hmm. just never know, right? But Stevens was the man. Like, that was, that was, the, that was, the, um, that was the pinnacle. Um, when you when – you, so, yeah, my team – it took a few years for my team to figure out how to win, but they did figure out how to win. Now we suck, but we had a hell of a run. Right, you yeah. guys, oh, yeah. you, you you guys right now remind me. You know who you remind me of? I'll tell you who you remind me of. Hockey wise, the two thousand to like two thousand seven, two thousand eight San Jose Sharks mm-hmm. on paper, always, always just good enough. Always like you're just like you look at it and you're like, you're the best roster I've ever like. You're one of yeah. the best rosters in the league. Why exactly. are you not winning? Right? Why are you not at least in the finals perennially? Like why? Yeah. Yeah, it's like why? Doesn't like make sense. it, it yeah. makes no sense. It was just like I looked at San Jose's roster back then, and then that, and again, I love my my Detroit Red Wings team, but on paper, San Jose was better than them at least a couple of times. I mean, when Calgary's third like starting goalie is literally their third string, you know how deep that team is, right? And it's like, uh, yeah. So that's so. I mean. That's your team. Your team, for whatever reason, is the – you have all the pieces there. Mm-hmm. You, I, The one I still can't believe is you lost to Boston the second time. Not the first time, the second time. <laughs> That's the one I still can't believe. I, I, I've said this a few times, and I was saying it a bunch in the, in the lead-up to this. Uh, like, it doesn't matter when it happens. I do feel as though – even if it's moving some pieces around, this Leafs team is going to break through. The path to greatness goes through Boston when it comes to this team. It absolutely does. At at the end of the day, like if they had made it through, then they, by some miracle, had beaten a well-rested Jets team, that next round was going to be in Boston. It's just the way that things go. Like you want to go to the cup, you got to go go back through the best line in hockey. But that Boston team was old the second time. Not the first time. First time, okay, you know what? You just got there the first time, but like it, it, like. Okay, my my last great hockey memories with Detroit was the the back to back Detroit Pittsburgh finals. Mm-hmm. They're my favorite. That's my favorite stuff, right? 
The first year I watched them play, the first year I watched them play, we were clearly better than Pittsburgh. But I watched Pittsburgh play, and I said, you know, if Pittsburgh finds their way back here and it's Detroit on the other side, I'm not sure the series goes to Detroit's way. I was right. That was Detroit's final, like, as the team, mm-hmm. and Pittsburgh dethroned them. But the other team I saw that was coming up was the team Detroit beat the second the second year. In the semifinals, I looked at the Chicago Blackhawks that year. I watched them. I was like, ooh, they're scary. They don't know how to get there yet, but they're scary. And then they got there. Yeah, oh, no, they were going to win next year. Detroit, Detroit was not going to be like yeah. – same thing. Same yeah. matchup next year, Detroit wasn't stopping them. It was yeah. just the first – it was the first – it's like anything else. You, you play a good team the first time that's only maybe a little better than you, but they have more experience. They beat you. The second time, you learn from it. And that's what happened with Pittsburgh, and that was what was going to happen with Chicago. Chicago was going to – I knew Chicago was going to annihilate everybody. Watching that series, is like, they're going to kill everybody next year. I don't see anyone stopping them, and I was mm-hmm. right pretty much the whole year. So that's the last time I was really in the hockey. But there are some constants that are still true. Um, my team still sucks. I mean, we, we're going to suck probably for another few years. A couple more years. A couple more years, yeah. but there, yeah. there's something there. Oh, no, no, no. We, we, we got to the point where we went through the you're paying for being good for so long phase. We've mm-hmm. passed yep. all that. Yep. Yep. Right, right. Now it's like we actually are rebuilding the team, which will mm-hmm. take however long it takes. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it, it's one of those things where, uh, yeah, like – I really wanted Toronto to win. I really did. I just want to see them get to the second round because I think that would be such a huge monkey off their back. <laughs> right? Just get out of the first round. It would. It would. But, I mean, and, and I was saying this as well, like I, I am a diehard Toronto fan and I always have been, but I gave up on the Toronto-Montreal rivalry. It's not fun anymore. I'm, I, I'm a fan of the history behind it, but I am done trying to slag Montreal fans and trying to insult them and cut them down or whatever. I'll do it for other reasons, but I'm not going to do it because of their hockey team anymore. And then when I'm watching them and they lose and they lose in epic fashion as only they can, and I'm watching and I'm like, they got beat by a better team and Carey Price is a god. I'm pulling for Carey Price. I, I'm like, I've, I'm a goalie coach when I'm coaching hockey. So I watch a lot of video and I watch a lot of goalies and how they operate. And I try and use a lot of those things and transfer them over to, to the kids that I have to coach. I've seen Carey Price in person in, uh, in like the summer leagues that he's playing in out in Kelowna and just the way that he works and how methodical he is. And then I watch this series and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that that is a guy that I can get behind. I don't care what colors he's wearing. I don't care what logos on his chest. He operates and he goes about his business the way that I would if I was a goalie. Uh, I never was, strangely enough, for a goalie coach. But if I was, I'd want to be like him. And the way he goes about most of his business, uh, again, he's um, – I'm, I'm not name-dropping here, but he is a, a – a friend of the family from from way back members of my wife's family and they speak nothing but amazing things about him and how he he goes about his family life and his professional life and his life in the public eye and all of it are things that i would love to emulate and i'd love to have my kids emulate so i'm like yeah he's he beat my team but i can pull for him he's the his personality and his abilities and and his professionalism transcend this petty stupid rivalry that toronto and montreal have had for so long because i'm sorry toronto fans montreal is better the stats are right there it it, it doesn't really matter how you break it down we can we can try and rally behind it all you want this is this is red Sox and yankees like you can have a rivalry all you want but at some point the red Sox have to look across new england and take a look at new york and take a look at their banner wall and the list of players that they've had and it's not even a competition and we're the same way and the faster we accept that the sooner we can get back to our rivalry with boston so jag trust here on, on twitch is has, has vehemently okay we will have our day one day we will. oh absolutely i'm not saying that like i'm not getting off of the i'm planning next year's parade train i'm, I'm firmly on that but <laughs> i am 
I'm then saying that we more. waste valuable energy if we're just like Montreal, because guess what? That Montreal team's young and they're coming up as well. Carey Price is still playing good. They're going to be around Price for a little the, while. Carey Price is the modern Patrick Waugh. Like, like in terms of just... But Patrick Waugh played with a lot of passion. He was fantastic. But you, like, when it comes to the way that they carry themselves when they are in the crease, they are two different kinds. Like oh, oh, absolutely. No, 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 no. But what I mean in terms of dominance, like when, 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 oh, yeah. when yeah, when yeah, in terms of in, dominance, they do it differently. Brodeur, but same as Brodeur pardon? in the, in Brodeur in his early career or when, and when, uh, the Devils were really, really hot and they were winning championships, bro, like quiet goes about the business, doesn't get overly emotional ish. And there's like, there's a good comparison and it, it's a good way to kind of carry about most of the stuff that you do at the beginning of the series or even at the beginning of some of these games, you take a shot on Carey Price and they would keep taking slap shots from the point for some reason with no obstruction. So obviously he's going to stop it. And he'd sit there and he'd do the flared glove save. Great. You get into the third period or overtime of close game and it's just boom, business, let's do this. They win the they win the entire series. Everybody's celebrating down the far end. Great. Carey Price turns around, takes a drink of water, and skates off. He's like, "This is business, guys. There's more work ahead," and, and that is how I most of the things that I do in my life, professionally yeah. or personally, because I really respect it. I, I I do enjoy like celebrating little victories. I do. I'm a big fan of that because I think it's important to remember where you're at in the journey. But I also remember it's a long game. It's not a short game. It's a long game, right? Yeah, Take, I, I think there's nothing wrong with taking that minute. I just, the only thing I'm going to say about that, there's nothing wrong with taking the minute and enjoying that moment. But remember, it's just a moment. And right. I, I'm, I'm sure he did. I'm, I'm absolutely positive that he had yeah. a smile and a drink when he gets back to the room or whatever it is he does to unwind. I am sure that he did. And I'm sure most mm -hmm. people who are like that absolutely do. But there, I think that there's something to be said, especially in the public eye, and especially if you think like sports which is which entertainment sports is i heard it said that sports is our reward for a functioning society and so it, it, we can take these larger than life personalities and we can take little things from them as well so you, if you see a guy just like yep business as usual guys let's move on to the next day here we go i i, I can get behind that but i absolutely agree but like i'm sure he's really happy about it but he's out there and millions of people yeah. across the country are watching it's just like yep yeah, this is what we do and that's terrifying if, if i was in the jets right now i don't care how much rest you've had i would be scared to death to see that in the other side of the rink and that's what you got to beat in order to get out of there and move on that, i are... think I, I i think the jets are a little too much for montreal but price will keep them in there that's going to go along just because it's him exactly. all right just yeah it's going along just because it's him i think that winnipeg's a better team though I just, I just, I just, I, I didn't like for Montreal, like what we were talking about earlier about Detroit schooling some of the teams that became the dominate in the, like the early 2010s, right? Mm -hmm. That's what Winnipeg's going to do with Montreal this year. They're going to probably, they probably, they'll take the defeat and then next year they're going to be so much better because that it, you, you play a team that makes you look at yourself honestly. It's even true, like, even like from a craft perspective, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've done some freelancing in this last year, and it's forced me to look at how I do things and have to get better, which has been a marvelously well. Th well, thank you, Jack. Yes, I am rocking with this haircut. This was always this was. You are, yeah. I haven't mentioned it yet, but it is. It's looking sharp, man, for sure. Y for sure. Yeah. It's, it's it's time for us to ditch the COVID hair. I think I never really had it. I I I, 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 I don't have the hair to have, but I, yeah, I well, have it. I, I had it for 18 months, like the last hair. It was 18 months between haircuts. Mm -hmm. uh, like, yeah. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to dwell on COVID too much. Everybody I've talked to, we all have our own like COVID therapy theory sessions thing. And, and I get it. Like, honestly, straight up, I, I, um, I get it because this was like, Looking back, no matter how what side of fence you see things, how you look at it, this was an incredibly traumatic experience for everybody. All, all in its own way, and everybody de dealt with it a, yeah, a, a little bit differently, right? Yeah, yeah, and and the and the thing is, what 
the like I'm at the point like I'm at the point like I do feel I do feel we're more behind it that there's more behind us than in front of us at this point. I, that's just my mm-hmm. feeling. There's more behind us than in front of us. Oh God, I hope uh, so. I, 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 think, no, I, I, I think I think I think so. Just look, if nothing else, the United States is going to force everybody to move forward, just based on the fact that they're gonna move forward no matter what. Good, bad, or indifferent, that's a debate for another day. I, like I said, I don't really want to do the, the whole thing, but I do think it's going to be more more behind than in front. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I will say is the only thing I'm going to say looking back, I, I and I've been quietly doing this, is um, I've been doing like this audio message for a bunch of people. I've been taking one minute just going to them why I appreciate people. I don't know if I got to you yet, buddy, but I was, if it hasn't, it'll come your way soon enough. Uh, but um, I, the responses I've got um, confirm something I think I, 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 the lesson, the biggest lesson I've learned, I never want to go through anything like this ever again in my life. Like, like, like mm. ever again, like, like never, I never want to see anything like this in our lifetime. However, if all of us must undergo another event like this, my sincerest wish the next time going forward is we're a lot kinder to each other, no matter where we stand on things, simply because the one thing I the one thing I can absolutely say, just what, what I've learned in that one minute of kindness to each person, we weren't kind enough to each other. Just the responses I've gotten from it has told me, has told me beyond a shadow of a doubt. Um, it's a, I think it's a collective thing more than anything else. Like, uh, like for, there was been so much division going on, at least in, in our part of the world, whether we're oh, actually associated with it or not, there's, there's, there's been so much division that's been going on out there that we cannot avoid it. And the, mm-hmm. whether you're for it or against it, the politicization of certain things has come to define us whether we wanted it to or not. And uh, like, I I think that, um, what's it called? Uh, uh, I want to say Newsroom, the TV show from HBO starring Jeff Daniels. Uh, I know, yeah, I want to say Newsroom too. I know which one you're talking about anyway, yeah. Yeah, like like obviously he's got like a couple of really famous speeches from there, but like there's, there's one that he talks about where he identifies himself as a Republican, but that used to mean so many more things, but now the only thing that being a Republican means is that you don't like Democrats and that he doesn't agree with that. And I think there's a little bit of that kind of mentality, like, okay, so we can talk about it politically, whether it's in the United States or Canada. So there's that separation. And then you suddenly have to hate the other person, or it's a mask thing where you got to wear masks or you don't got to wear masks, or you agree with the way the government's handling things, or you don't agree with the way the government, like, it goes on. There's all these different things that are causing all these divisions. And it's this mass collective where we are being poured down upon by all of these different opinions from different places. And it's been more in our face than ever before because we have social media and, and we, we are almost in a way forced to consume news at this time because so many people who weren't going out or weren't going to into the office or something, they're not getting their, water cooler talks with their friends anymore, or they're not hearing news or information, or maybe they would sit down when they got to the office and before their day started, they'd have a cup of coffee and maybe just briefly peruse the news. But now we're forced to watch news and see what's going on because it affects our lives. Like we got to know when the provinces and the states and countries are opening up and we have to know all these things. We have to stay plugged in just a little bit. And as much as some of us are like, oh, I'm going to delete my Facebook account and I'm going to stay off Twitter and for us to function right now, we still, many of us, I won't, I won't generalize and say all, but many of us still, we, we still got to stay plugged in. Well, I, I do it anyway. I do it willingly. I'm just like, news, give me the news, good, bad, indifferent. But even people who tend to stay away from it, they're, they're seeing it a lot more. And then when you take a look at it, you, you, you maybe read another article that's just below the banner headline and, and that, like it, it trickles and it, it weighs upon our heads so much more these days. So, I find myself, people have been so much nicer in this time, but I understand exactly what you're saying because I'm an island unto myself in some ways because because of the way that I've had to handle this last 
14 months. But also we just see, we cannot avoid and we are forced to consume negativity or not even negativity, but counterpoints to our own that might upset us. And it, it, is, it is an atlas size weight upon all of our shoulders right now. So I, I, I actually, I, I, I saw something ironically enough, an entertainment thing that talked about the grief in terms of concept of grief. And one of the things that I actually, I, and I think this resonates, it's easier to attack something or someone when you have an enemy you can't fight. Like, mm -hmm. if I were to go, if I were to, like, like, let's just say for the sake of argument that we so are into our sports teams, you with your Toronto Maple Leafs and me with my Detroit Lions. Shut up. I know. It's okay. <laughs> Tampa Bay fan for years, and that didn't used to mean anything. That was like being a Detroit fan until this last year, and then we had to sell our souls in order to do something. So yeah, I understand. It's, it's okay. Like like I said, we're so yep. adamant. We're so good. And then this great disaster that's beyond anybody's control happened. One of the hardest truths to accept about the world is that bad things, bad and unfair things happen to people all the time. Right? Yes. You're right, but that's it's, hard. It's my favorite. What, it's my favorite book. It's my favorite movie. It's The Princess Bride. Who says yeah. life is fair? Where is that written? It's absolutely true. <laughs> like yeah, no, it's absolutely true. But it's much harder world to live in. It's a much harder world to live in when you acknowledge that there is no bad guy. You're just seeing people doing the best we can with what is essentially, in my opinion, and overall, if we were really, I think, ultimately honest with ourselves, an absence of good solutions because. North America's never experienced anything like this. No. Or hasn't experienced it. Yeah, actually, I yeah. actually, actually honestly say that. Um, I, I would say that the American Civil War would, like, a lot of people died, and it was division. It was North versus South, and it was, like, having not lived in the 1800s and not having experienced that myself. I've, I, I've, I've thought about this before, and you bring up a good point. Like, we've had defining moments as a continent, even, like, like we're, we're not that old. Like mm -hmm. when we when we think about it, it, even surpassing like 1492 and Columbus not coming here, but like the the let's even start with 1776 and okay, so now mm -hmm. we've got a country who is separate from the colonizers and moving on. There there hasn't been like on our own shores. There's been yeah, we've had some wars, skirmishes, if you will, back and forth. Um, in in the in the 1800s but the civil war is about the only one that i can think of that would cause this kind of division cause this kind of death and is like this is the kind of thing you're not really going to see at another time and and something that is going to divide people like that that division of north and south that mason dixon it's it's real it, it, mm -hmm. and it never went away and i don't think that this is going to go away oh, no no it won't no it won't and like, and but what but the thing is all i'm saying is looking back something i just real like i for me the defining moment of the pandemic happened for me right at the very beginning of it i was in vancouver and i was in a, I, this was before we did the whole essential thing i was going to work i was watching vancouver slowly become nothing i've never seen downtown vancouver that empty ever it was weird every day i would wake up and go out it'd be like i did not know what to expect and going to work you know, i left earlier it was taking me later and longer because again it was just this weird haze of uncertainty like there's just nothing like there was just nothing to to go by mm -hmm. and i remember and i remember um so I come home from work that night and i'm going back and i'm, I'm taking the train and I get off at uh, downtown Vancouver. There's nobody there. This homeless guy comes up to me, and and he asks for like this, like just just something to draw. He's going to be on the train. He wants to do something. I didn't have anything, and, and this was before any like. And everybody's still kind of, and everybody even then was worried being too close to each other. He's like, oh man, that's okay. We we were talking. It was pleasant, and then he thanked me. Put his hand out. And right then and there, because I just thought in the back of my head, it was like, what, should I take it or not? And right then and there, I just realized, like, this is the cruelty of this beyond anything else. Because the first time in my life I ever had asked this question, is a hug worth dying for? 
And that right there it was the whole, like for me, is the whole apex of the whole thing because it's not the big things that we miss, it's the little things hugs, handshakes, high fives, contact, trust, those things, right? It, now, if you have family, it's not so bad, right? It, it's not, it depends on who you are as a person. I, sure. I, I don't make a lot of friends or fans by saying that I've been kind of okay with that because that's, no, that's who I was no, a person. And like, I, I appreciate a good solid handshake, but um, I'm not, I'm not much of a hugger for one reason or another, like using that as like a general term for. Oh, sure. Closer. But I, I would much, look... much to my wife's dismay. I'd like to add uh, as she, has to suffer through living with me. And that's just a long, long list of things she has to suffer through living with me. Yeah, fair, fair enough. My point though, it's not okay for everybody, whatever the case may be, we've all lost some little things in, in this. And I realized like mm -hmm. that to me was the cruelest part about this. Now, some people will disagree with me for doing this. I shook his hand because I recognized like for me, that was the promise I kind of made to myself throughout this time. And I think for the most part I've kept it is I would be kind to everyone. I wasn't gonna let this make me inhumane towards someone who sees things differently from me. And I made that promise at the very beginning mm -hmm. of the pandemic. And like I said, I have friends on both sides. I'm somewhere in the middle on the, on the whole thing without actually getting into too much detail. I'm somewhere in the middle. And honestly, Honestly, like I, I feel like um, looking at it and just being honest about it, it's like I just think like look. I think the one thing I've just noticed in general with people is we've been a lot crueler to each other. Partly because of the, but I think I think because the stress, the trauma, and looking just for a release of it, and nothing to do but to turn on each other. And I reckon that. And again, I and, that, and to me, because again, it makes things simpler. If people would just behave, things would be normal. And eh, maybe if people, if people, right, 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 if, if, right, or, or how dare you, you sheeple for not, for following what the government tells you. Okay, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. It's easier, it's easier to do that than look at the world and say, this really just fucking sucks. And there's really not much anybody can do about it right now. Now, grant you, it's, it, now grant you. I can't buy socks and underwear right now in Ontario. There are some real absurd things about this pandemic. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you that. For sure, for sure. Yeah. The, the, the golfing and camping ban still kind of blew my mind for a little while. Like those are the, possibly the two most socially distant things you could ever do. So why not? I'll give it to people and allow them to go out there. But I mean, I, a big part of this is because none of us have ever really dealt with something like this before, yeah, including our elected officials. Oh, sure. We're all just kind of flying by the seat of our pants at this point, right? We're just trying to throw stuff against the wall and see what sticks. And some people have chosen a path following the heart and some uh, following the head and some, some mishmash in between. And we praise the people whose ideas seem to have worked out and we chastise the ones whose ideas seem to have crashed and burned. But I don't think any one of us could probably have done better in their positions. So who are we to cast those stones? I, well, well, I just, I, the only thing I say, I, the only thing I say, looking back, we could have taken better care of our small businesses. I, that's just the only thing I'm going to say. I think, I think looking at what other countries did and what we did, we did not do a good job taking care of the people that are deemed unessential I, and I, in terms of small businesses and like that that's the one thing i'm going to carry with me on, on this going forward but that all said i mean yeah this like this was not an easy thing this was something that's never happened like this before hopefully never will again hopefully not but um like i said there's there was an absence, and that's how I'm going, to, I'm going to think of this. This was an absence of a good solution, not not a. There was good solutions or there were bad solutions. It was just an absence of really any good alternatives, and we just doing the best we can to fumble through them. However, we do it. It's totally true, and yeah. and, and 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 we we all kind of handle these things, and we and we react 
differently to them, but I, I, I have a really hard time. Like I see the people who believe something different from me and I hear the words that they are saying and I have a really hard time jumping down their throats because if it wasn't this thing that we were disagreeing on, it would be something else. They're just mm -hmm. talking about, but on the other side of things, I've always maintained at the end of the day, we are catching these people in one of the worst moments of their lives or at a moment where they are seeking some kind of attention, like they want to be seen at that point. And if I was to catch them at a moment where they didn't necessarily want to be seen, I'm certain we'd probably get along on a million different things. And even if it was just the basic framework of what we consider to be moral, or even if it's just something stupid, like favorite movies and sports teams, like there, there's been an absence of finding that kind of common ground, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, unless you're going out there and your actions are actually hurting people. And like, it's just like, yeah, it's pretty clear that your actions are hurting people. I'm, I'm not going to be all like, that guy's an idiot or this girl doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. Or, I'm not going to get into some flame war on Twitter over somebody's complaining about a picture of mine with them where I'm wearing a mask or something like, that. like I, I've seen it. I've had it. I got no time for it. And just like, okay, well, that's just somebody's opinion. And they're, following yeah exactly no whatever it, it, it is and, that they think is right and that and again and looking looking going forward it's just like that's all you can do right that's all you, all you can do is the best you can in the time you got that, that's it and uh so on and so forth all right COVID therapy session ladies and gentlemen for the day because i i think I, th I think i think both of us i think i think both of us are kind of in the same boat Eh, that's not <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I think yeah. everybody's kind of in that. It doesn't really matter where you were at the start of this. By this point, you're just like, eh. yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, I, like, 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 like I said, I'm just watching. I'm watching. Um, I watch what goes on. And I'm seeing how things are playing out, and I definitely got some book material. I, I should. I, the story of how I got this haircut will make a book someday. Actually, mm. you're right. Uh, just, yeah, and but, I. I've had no book material at all. I've up until a little while ago, I barely wrote a thing for the last fourteen months. So. And, and for me, I, I've written tons. I've drawn. I've turned the podcast into this. Like, like, like the what? Okay, I've never been to anything through like this, but this is my second apocalypse. My first one was very personal, mm. but it gave me all. It, it gave me all the tools to like. And this is my second time dealing with like a pressure cooker situation like not like this exactly but the idea yeah, of that yeah, kind of pressure yeah. i've been there before right so so for me it was like okay let's let's see what happens like let's let's take some chances right now because honest to god it doesn't really matter right now if it doesn't work out i'm in the exact same spot i was mm. and if it does work out cool things will happen and cool things have happened and uh like there's a, there's ups there's downs like today like we talked off the air that very interesting down occurred to me for me today and it was like yep but at the same token and i i mean i also know this too and i know that this is going to happen more and more as i keep going down the path i chose i wanted to be a freelancer which means i know like me getting like regular day jobs those days i'm not quite behind me yet but yeah, it, 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 they're, it's they're numbered it's it's tough like i know that if you dedicate yourself to it as much as possible it, it it's a slow climb but it's still a climb you can actually absolutely get it i know somebody whose um husband had that exact same thought he started just doing it a little bit and found a good niche and and found a good uh found a good collection of clients and now does it full time and couldn't be happier about it, it, it yeah it and and i it's the kind of thing I've I've done some as well, and and now I'm putting myself out there for like narration and voice acting and those kinds of things. So it runs in a lot of the same kind of circles, and it, there's a lot of people who are going to run right over me because this is what they want to do with their lives. Whereas I'm just a guy with a microphone and a little bit of sound uh, mixing and production knowledge and if somebody's just like, I'm going to steal a job from that guy, well, go ahead and steal it. I don't care. Well, gags are written for you, and so am I. I. For me, the hardest part for freelancing for me is I have a lot of skills. 
like just doing what I do, I've, I've acquired a lot of different like knowledge, know-how, short cars. And, and actually I do agree with Jake. You have the kind of voice that if you, if you really put yourself out there, you'll get something done. You really will. Like I am no, and, and, and you also have the wit, you have the wit, you have a wit about you. That's really, 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 really like. We're, we're the enough that's like the second time today i've heard that so i'll take it no I, i'm like I, i'm being deadly serious like you have a great voice like you really really do like you you, you have it you have you you have a you you have a you have a dry sarcastic wit so you, you should be finding you should be finding you should be I, i'm i'm deadly serious about this i really mean this find the driest more sarcastic shit you can find on the internet that requires a voice and go for it you um, will get it i did because it was my own book and then i narrated it <laughs> because that was awesome. the driest most sarcastic because when i when i wrote that book it was very much uh, i'm talking about my first book death dresses poorly and i i narrated and did the audiobook for that earlier this year and the one of the main reasons that I did that was because when I would go back and I would read it because I'm vain and I read my own stuff and uh, uh, it it would have felt wrong for anybody else to read my words there because I wrote it uh, like it, it is a dark comedy, but the sarcasm of the main character and the way that his jokes and, 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 and his dry wit hit. I know that out there there's probably a voice actor who could give that some kind of some some kind of punch and chutzpah that it needs. I cannot afford that voice actor. So that's when I decided to I'm just like I have, I would love to do it myself because if there's one story of mine, if there's one thing that I know needs that edge and needs that dry sarcasm, it is my book and that's why I ended up doing it. My other stuff and like my fantasy stuff, I don't necessarily know if it would hit as well. I'd get to play with accents and that kind of thing, but the, the but, first but, one I mean, but big one. you do dry like dude, even when you write all your stuff on Facebook, I'm laughing because I know you're being a sarcastic shit and like the best I'm saying that in the best kind of way. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, that that's that's you. And and, and like so this is the, like the big lesson I learned in freelancing. It took me about six months to fully grasp this, right? The first lesson I learned was what makes a good client, what makes a bad client, this, which is a, a great lesson to learn, by the way. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. But, but yeah, the second lesson, the second lesson I learned is, okay, niching is a great way to start out. It's a great way to figure out, but for a guy like me who writes and podcasts and does like all these, all these things, right? Mm -hmm. what, what, what do I niche at? Like, because it's like, I can, I, I, <clears throat> so it occurred to me, it occurred to me that this thing I've been doing for years and years and years is my niche. And what I should be doing is utilizing it to get me gigs, which I did, but it took me until I ran out of money to figure this shit out. Right. Yeah. The great motivator. Yeah, it, it really, really is. But which is why, like, like, like I said, I'm, I'm doing different things. I, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm learning different things, doing different things, and and trying to utilize those things in the best environments possible. And that's what I'm doing. Like when I freelance, it's interviews, it's 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 interview stuff, it's writing stuff because I do that pretty well too. It's. Um, you know, I, I just tried doing real estate. It didn't quite work out the way I thought I might, but I still got paid for doing a job, which is, is something to be proud of, right? And, you know, and that's the thing, like, I'm not everything I'm going for, not all of it's going to work. But the stuff that does work, right, is going to be close to the guy that, that's doing it. Mm -hmm. I have an incredibly big mouth. That, that's, that's, my, that's my weapon of mass destruction, right, right? So that's what I should be focusing on is I have the voice. So let me use it. And, and what do I do with it? I get people to tell their stories very well. That's my strength. Let me find places that want that. Yeah, we are, we are, we're both about the same age. I think we can both agree. We are, we are at about that point where we realize that some of the things that might have been perhaps holding us back into quote unquote real world are things that we should have been embracing all along and 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 leaning into a little bit in order to to find our path at this point in our lives. Cause that's exactly what I like. I 
I, I wanted to write for so long and I wanted to be a voice actor for so long and I, I just didn't. And cause, because society around me was just like, we can't do that. They're like you, there's, there's nothing about that. That's going to be productive for you. So don't. And, and yeah, like if, if you know that you're good at getting people to talk, then put yourself into some kind of medium where you can get people to talk. And for myself, it was, hey, if I wanted to be creative and I wanted to put things out, there's a million different ways that I can do it. So I'm just going to go out there and put those things out. And neither you nor me nor anybody else should care about what the societies around us have said we should or should not do, provided we're not doing something stupid or illegal. Oh, well, 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 well yeah, okay. I will say, though, stupid is, is a, is a, is a, um, very broad term much like okay, good yeah. good 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 and stupid okay. are very broad terms so uh, okay so 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 long as we are not doing something that uh, uh hurts ourselves or others in some kind of way that i think all of us can agree with that that yeah, that is that is exactly. that's clearer that is much clearer here's what i'm going to do i already made this decision even if i have to go with like so for anyone that watching listening i got fired today or laid off from my job today i was fired for and it's i don't even really care like i mean i'm gonna be very perfectly blunt it was shitty the the, the way it was done was shitty but at the same token i don't care right i am be right right yeah jay don't don't no, no i i'll tell you off the air jay if you want if you want i'll email you the whole story it's it, it's not mark 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 now should I've been sh now should I've been fired for this? No, 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 not from the story that you told me. No, but no. it it's a strange world and people are acting in strange ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell, I'll tell, I'll tell you. It was, it was like, it was stupid. Basically, I was fired because the guy was in a bad mood and he could. Right, that was that was why he did. It. If you want to get right down to all the brass tacks, cut all the bullshit out of it. That's why I was fired. I don't care. Do you want to know why I don't care? Two reasons. I don't see myself as an employee anymore, number one. But number two, a man that small doesn't deserve me. No, uh, no. no. Yeah. No, no, no. Exactly, right? Like, yeah. I, I recognize in myself, one of the things that I've realized about myself that I tried to lie to myself about when I was in my 20s is that I do not make a good manager. Uh, I, I can I can coach and I can do that kind of thing, but as soon as I start to have to really affect people's lives and, and let them know where to go, I, I do not have the personality to be a manager. When it comes to the hiring and the firing and the and and the the finger wagging or the praise, I I don't have the skill set for it. But that made me respect the managers that I have had, and I've had bad managers and I've had good managers that I've I've been able to follow, and. I nowadays, if I am not working for somebody, because I recognize in myself that I will likely be working for somebody until my working days are over, and I'm okay with that. I'm not yes, saying yes, that yes. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, uh, that finding some working for somebody who I know and respect, like I like I do right now, it is it is just so huge because for somebody with my type of personality, I'm not going to be constantly striving for his job yeah i want to advance and i want to do things and i want to learn new skills but I, i'm 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 not i am not the wolf of wall street i am not american psycho i am not i am not here just to like i i want to work hard and i want to be respected for the work that i do and i want to respect the people that i work with and especially if it's my boss and i've I've done it before where I've left a job because I just could not work for that boss anymore. Actually, I've done it three times. Not great. Me too, actually. <laughs> actually, me too. Me too. I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm making sure there's no more than that. I mean, one of them was at Future Shop, and I don't really know if anybody really respected their manager at Future Shop. Uh, hard to say. But no, that's not true. I know somebody who did. But it. it I, I would, gas to quit. Love it. Love it. <laughs> No, I did, and but even that was only because it was my wife, and she liked her boss when she was working there because that's where I met her. But she didn't work in a uh, 
commissions-based sales environment in that store. She worked in another department that was not commission-based, so they could all just hang out and all, while all the rest of us were trying to cut each other's heads off. And it was it, it was not the right place for me. Uh, and yeah. and it, it, it taught me a lot about what it is that I want for a boss and what it is that I don't. And I followed that pretty true all the way through. And it hasn't steered me wrong. The jobs that I've had for a long time, uh, working, I've worked in the outdoor industry for a long time, uh, the places uh, like Mountain Equipment Co-op, which was all a, a great bunch of people. Now it's Mountain Equipment Company. I'm not going to get started on that. But, uh, and, and the job that I work at right now is, I've, I've been there, I just celebrated 10 years of being an employee and I've actually been there for 12 because I was on contract for a little bit. And it was a great decision because I respected the boss. Oh, yeah. and, and one of those bosses that I left because I, I, I wasn't a big fan of the way that they were doing things, we, we were having a conversation. He was a nice guy. I'm not saying he was a bad guy. I just couldn't work no. for him as an employee. One of, the, one, one of the things that we were talking about one time is we were talking about management because I was trying to be, I was in my 20s, early 20s. I wanted to be an assistant manager at the store. And uh, we, were, we were having a conversation over lunch one time. And he's like, well, what do you think? Of, what do you think your main role is? as the manager and i'm like my main role as the manager is to keep the employees happy he's like no your main role is to make sure that the employees keep the customers happy and i'm like i've got to have to disagree because if i keep my employees happy as long as the business continues to function then they will go out and they will serve people in a a, a better way and and they will make sure that the good the good feelings that their boss has given to them and the encouragement or or the the direction that i've given to them that carries through and then like so long as they respect me they're not going to be disrespectful to the business and they're going to listen to some of the things that i have to say if i have to be a bit critical of them and we had this massive good-hearted debate about it's like no you have the Customers run the business and customers bring the money in. And, and I was like, yeah, well, I'm like my employees going to deal with that. My job is to make sure my employees are good and, and, and deal with anybody who comes in who has a specific, I want to talk to the manager moment. I'll be there for that, obviously, because I've been those floor sales people as well. So that, that was like another key awakening where like some people don't think, some managers don't think the way that I think. And I'm I'm not going to change. I, I like the way that I think. I have that problem for a lot of things, whether they're good or bad, where I'm like, yeah, this part of my aspect, well, like, this aspect of my personality isn't great, but I like it about me and I'm not hurting anybody. So what's the, again, something yeah, like, like to deal with constantly. You're, like, you're comfortable who you are. Like when I interviewed you last time, yeah. we, were, we, were, we were talking about like your, your life goals and stuff like that when we were talking. Like that was the one thing, like, Although I did bust your balls a little bit on some things, the truth of the truth of the matter, the truth of the matter was, right? I did respect a lot where you were coming from, and that was the one. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got it. Like, you, 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 you still say that you don't think that I'm really an anti-author, and uh, no, yeah, yeah. I, I, I still maintain that I am. Uh, I, but I think our our scope, our our definition of the idea might be a little bit different. I understand I, what it is that you're saying. Yeah. And I think you're, you're right when you say it. But do, 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 it's, do you know on my honest opinion of you? Your dad for your dad and family man first, and an author second, and that's of and that and that and that. I'm, is your I'm an, I, I think I'm an author like seventh. I think there's well, like five you know other what? things that I could also yeah. put above that <laughs> list as well. But I mean, I mean, it doesn't mean that I don't treat it seriously. That's the one thing I was no, trying to impress is like I, I talk down to it in a kind of way by saying the, the whole anti-author. I, I, I don't I don't follow a lot of the norms that, uh, that many of my writing contemporaries do. Uh, and I don't pl ever plan on doing this as a full time job in my life. But I always make sure that I say that does not mean I do not respect it. That does not mean I do not respect the people who have chosen to go that way. I will treat absolutely everything that I do in this industry with the utmost of respect for everybody who has come before me and has had to slog through the mountains of rejections and, and done the freelancing things where they've been struggling for years to try and make something of it because they had a vision of what it was that they wanted to do. And I completely, completely respect all of that. But it, it, 
I, I thank you for it. I agree that I do think that I am a family man first because what else have I got? What other, what other legacy have I got? I've got, I've got my family and, and my close circle of friends. And at the end of the day, all the rest of my stuff I'm, I can't take with me. So yeah, I got if, it. if I can't put like, I, I like to say this kind of like little story and, and it, it, for some people it makes them think, Hey, like I, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that I agree or disagree with the people who do these kinds of things, but things like volunteering massive amounts of time at places like food banks, homeless shelters, those kinds of things. I am not the kind of person who can do those kinds of things, not because I don't think that they are worthwhile and they are, are worthy causes that are worthy of my time, but I've always thought about the fact that there are large amounts of time that I could be spending teaching my kids about those kinds of good things and showing them in other ways how we can help out and whether it's helping out around home or just in the world and especially these days like I, I sit down with them and I tell them these conversations that we've had even though they're not terribly old they're 13 and 11 now it, it it's a noble thing if that's what it is that you want to do that I know that I'm not comfortable doing but charity begins at home and we must make sure that at the end of the day no matter how we get there we are decent people and if we choose to give our time to those kinds of causes like I know people uh, especially at my office who they go home they have something quick to eat and then they're out for four or five hours volunteering and they are amazing amazing people and that's great and I could not do that because I am exhausted and I probably have baseball to coach and they get my time because they are the only thing that I'm going to have at the end of the day to give to the world when I am gone. And I either do my best to make them decent people who can give back to society in every possible way they can, or I, I miss out and I don't. And that's got to be my number one priority is making sure that I can do things like writing and I can, I can do things like talking to a microphone so long as with things with them, with my kids, with my wife or friends who need me do not suffer because I, I feel that that's always got to be first. I'm, I'm not going to be one of those people that's like, and I personally, my personal things are like way down the list as well. Like, like uh, there's a, there's something to be said, just like you had mentioned earlier, there's something to be said for taking that breath and recognizing the things that you have achieved that are really good. But going back to Carey Price, he does the job, celebrates in his own way, and moves on to the next thing. And that's exactly what it is that I do. Celebrate the job, move on to the next thing. So, and I'm going to talk about, I think, the last thing. First off, Joe, go in now, says, matter of fact, nobody knows who he is. And I like you too. I respect the hell out of you, right, just for that. But the other thing, here's the one thing I will give you, and this is something that you taught me so i'm going to thank you for this right here on the air no matter what prior the thing i really admire about you no matter where the priorities are in your life whatever time you give to those priorities in whatever order they are in your life you go all out on them that i respect about you and that's the one thing i, I like if you are a lesson in nothing else to anybody whatever time you give something you give it your all and that this man, I'm always going to admire about you, my friend. And I thank you for it, and I'm glad that you can that you can get that because that's the, exactly the kind of message that I would want to give to anybody. That's exactly the kind of thing that I try and impart on my kids. Because one thing I have to also recognize is that I have been incredibly lucky and incredibly privileged in my life for a lot of different things in ways that so many people in this world are not. And if I am not giving everything that I can to a certain passion or a certain profession or to my family, then I, uh, I am betraying the hardships that so many people have been through to get me to this point. And so many that people are going through in the world right now who would absolutely like, I'm not lying. They would literally kill me in order to take my spot and have the benefits and the advantages that I do. And I recognize that. I absolutely completely recognize that. And I am humbled by that. And it, 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 it is 
incredibly fulfilling because I, if I can help and I can inspire my kids or you, which which is great, or anybody else, then then boom, point for Mark, check rate, right. moving on. And that, now, of course, he will say something sarcastically witty about this on, on his Facebook at some point because that it, that might be a hard thing for him to express, but he will do it. And also. You got a book out, man. You got a pre-order coming up. Congrats. I I have it out. It's it is out right now, and to the point where I have a physical copy nice. in my hands right now. Um, there's a this the 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 quick kind of wait a minute. That looks kind of familiar. Story is that this is a book that I released a few years ago. It was with a different publisher, and that publisher went under, and I refused to let it die. Uh, it, this this book and I we have such a history together um I, I i actually just released a youtube video about it that people can check out um it, it is if you if you just uh, google Wright watson youtube w-r-i-t-e you can you can find me on there and, and it, it it's been picked up it's been dropped it's been picked up it's been dropped and so now it is with a publisher with fluky fiction out of maine in the states and i've worked with them before i've worked with them a bunch they published my first book and now my catching hell duology so this is catching hell part one journey and uh thank you very much jack you're right this does look good i cannot take any credit for this other than the 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 general idea uh, see, look, I, I have this uh, the message that I'm followed and I have it on my wrist because I'm really plugged in. Thank you very much for that. Uh, love, by the way, on, on personal, before you wrap up, you'll love Jack. Jack's amazing. Just right saying. on. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody in this industry is amazing. Uh, yeah. But so this is Catching Up Part One Journey. It is my epic science fantasy novel. It is part one of two. There's only going to be a duology. And I promise the other one's already written because I already released it a few years ago. But this has been reworked, remastered. The cover is clearly amazing. And I cannot thank Fluky Fiction enough for this. Uh, they've had two covers for me for two books I've done with them. And they've knocked both of them out of the park. And I get nothing but wonderful praise and i'm i'm so thankful that they're as creative and as amazing as they are and this is this is epic science fantasy it is dark it has uh it has a lot of the classic science fiction and fantasy tropes and it also sticks it in the eye of a lot of science fiction and fantasy tropes and i'm I've been, never been more proud of this book because just like one of the main characters who is an imposing Scottish Phoenix, it dies and it rises right back up from the ashes, bigger and stronger than ever. And I am so thankful that it's back out in the world and it is available right now, as well as death dresses poorly and my collection of short stories from the same world as catching hell, which is between conversations, tales from the world of Ryujin. Yeah. So as you can see, Mark's awesome. Where can people find you? That would actually be the last question here, and then yep. we can wrap up this short but wonderful. Hey, not too bad. We didn't do too much maple leaf therapy. We actually got into some serious gonna, stuff there. It's an ongoing process, and it's a conversation that needs to be had, and it has for like every single one of my forty-one and and, and increasing years. It's hey, listen, I know you're not much of not, not you know not much of a hugger. But there you go, buddy. There, virtual there. hugs are fine. Virtual hugs are fine, buddy. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, um, where can you find me? You can find me at markwatson.ca. That's M-A-R-C-W-A-T-S-O-N.ca. Not .com, which is another author named Mark Watson, who's also a really cool guy, but he's not me. So I just want to be clear about that. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, which is where I'm most active at Wright Watson. So like literally at Wright Watson, the W-R-I-T-E-W-A-T-S-O-N, which is the same as my Instagram, which I'm getting better at. And then you can always find me on Facebook as well at facebook.com slash Mark wrote a book, all one word, M-A-R-C. Nice. Well, everybody, this is Mark Watson. He's awesome. He's a good dude. And uh, definitely check out his books. As for me, listen, I know I said, really don't worry about me. I will be fine no matter what. I just like honestly look at it as a blessing in disguise. If a guy like that's gonna fire me for something as small as he fired me for, I honestly was too good for him. Period. And as for the rest, you can support my podcast one of the two ways. Uh, you can uh, you can follow me on Twitter or, or not Twitter, sorry, Twitch, twitch.tv slash just joshing podcast, click the like follow button. I have the subscriber count, guys, and we just got to get more people watching so I can become an affiliate officially. 
All right, so I'm at, but I'm literally at the door and have been for a bit. My YouTube channel is Joshua Pantelaresco. Uh, you can find me there. Uh, I got a book announcement June fifteenth. Regardless of what happens in the next little bit, I can I can actually get. I have a book announcement coming out. Uh, not lights out. It's not gonna be lights out first. Lights out. That's gonna be Christmas this year. Written. That's gonna be written and illustrated by me. I actually illustrated stuff, Mark, this year. I don't know if you've seen any of my drawings or not. I have. I have, and you're a braver man than me. You're also a much better artist than I am. So <laughs> I understand that that's kind of the point of the whole thing, and I appreciate that. But yeah, uh, um, yeah you, you, I'm not going to be a part of that show. No, but 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 if it makes you if it makes you if it makes you feel better, I literally started drawing like this like four or five months ago. Like literally, yeah. I just like, like yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I know. And light years ahead of me already. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I leave the art to my wife. She's amazing at it. And so actually, you know what, Jay? I'll tell you now what the next book is going to be. I'm actually going to make this announcement right here. So Alice Zero, my epic poem last year, I can, I'm not going to reveal what the award is actually nominated for an award. And that nomination officially comes out June 15th. My sequel, Alice One, is actually going to be coming out first this year. That's why it's going to be Alice One, Jag, because honest to God, I got to, I, I mean, I achieved a major goal this year. I always wanted my writing to be recognized, and it is. And not a way I ever expected, but it is. And so, Alice One is written by yours truly. It is illustrated by Kenzie Carr. Stay tuned for more details June 15th, right? So, and so beyond that, guys, this is Mark Watson. Mark's a really good dude. He's a writer. He might be a writer seventh, but he's a, he's a great human being. We'll say second. Good family guy first. I'm just give you that. I'll, I'll give that to okay. you. Just that's good. Poutine aficionado third. Yes. Okay. Fine. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll do. We'll do go with that. We'll go with that. This is Mark. This is Josh. I'll be back tomorrow. New podcast. Stay inspired, everybody. Keep shining in the dark and keep making beautiful things. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Um, peace.